Free, as in freedom, not free beer, is a common saying amongst the computer elite. It's an idea at the very heart of the computer revolution that is copyleft software. A copyleft world looks very different than what has flourished around iOS and Android. Even though the core of Android is open, the way we make Android handsets is not. The manufacturers often have no idea how the drivers that empower their smartphone actually work, which is kind of scary. This forces phones to come out with similar specs and just about the same Android-based OS. It makes you wonder what a world would look like if those proprietary locked away pieces of code got pushed out and treated like the untrustworthy crap fest that they are. After all, it's your computer, you should be able to study and understand what is happening. But you can't, because companies are worried that they won't be able to make as much money if you can modify your own device. These companies are protecting their IP in a way that makes it illegal to distribute modified copies of their driver. So even if you could decompile a driver and add something interesting, you wouldn't be able to share it with a community that's in the same boat as you are. With every company defending its own IP to this extreme, we the customers suffer. It limits what we can do with the devices we already own. There's a lot that Android phones can do that Purism's Librem 5 cannot do just yet. But the Librem 5 is liberated in a way that has never been seen before. Purism has picked hardware that, while not easy to use in a phone, is much more open than the alternatives. For example, the Librem 5 uses an IMX, which is a grouping of important chips like the GPU and CPU. NXP, the company responsible for the IMX, is dedicated to open source. This means NXP has to spend a lot of time developing drivers. They also have to spend a lot of development time getting those drivers into the mainline version of Linux. Paying for all that dev work is costly. It makes NXP chips more expensive compared to other chips with similar specs. The result of developing in the open like this is undeniable. People passionate about computers can use and improve NXP's drivers. Those same developers would likely feel encumbered by the numerous proprietary barriers floating around Android. I myself cannot stand it. Even using a hack to hell and back ROM, you can only get so much customization out of Android. At the end of the day, an Android smartphone is hardware running proprietary drivers and an old heavily modified version of Linux. Plus 80 cool apps and 3 million ad ridden mostly proprietary useless apps and you've got Android. The Leap from 5 is hardware running on open drivers, at least on the main CPU, and is capable of running mainline Linux. Purism is dedicated to getting all of its changes pushed into the projects that they are based from. Where other companies would just fork Linux and use their fork of Linux, Purism pushes their changes back into the mainline kernel for everyone to take advantage of. Instead of demanding new apps be built for the Librem 5, Purism is building tools to adopt the Linux ecosystem of apps, which is mostly made up of open source software. It's all stuff made and used by the developers for the developers and to benefit the community of users. Instead of building tooling to help spam users with ads or pop-up chat bubbles, Purism is enabling you to pick your favorite toolset and go nuts. While the end user story is still getting better as apps and features are added, the developer story is unparalleled already. Let's take a look at Android. The most common programming language is Java. The other official language for Android is dumped down Java, or Clayton. You can write a low level C or C++ program, but you'll still need to use the Android tooling and Android UI elements, which means you'll have to write an Android specific app. It also means you'll have to write a different app if you want to support anything else other than Android. There are other options, like Unity if you want to drop some cash, but at the end of the day, you'll be writing the Android way on an Android device. Let's see what it would take to build a simple application on Android. It seems Android Studio is just about required to do anything. You'll want to pick between Java and Kind of Java. Wonderful. It's the simplest example app they could come up with, and it's pointlessly object-oriented. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be teaching OOP as a Hello World example. But whatever, it's Java. You'll also have to deal with some XML that describes the UI. Cool, you got your example code pulled up and it's time to run. Here you'll need an Android phone to test with, or you can follow these directions to set up an emulator. Finally, you can test your app and start writing some real code. Now let's take a look at the Librem 5. Librem 5 developers are mostly writing in Python, Rust, C, and Vala. But the Librem 5 is just desktop Linux, which is arguably one of the best development environments around. 
so really the sky's the limit. If you're feeling really zesty, write your own programming language, package it up, and use that. There's nothing stopping you. Print hello world, echo hello world, display hello world, program hello world. So many options here, it's crazy. Any GNU Linux OS can act as your development playground. I write my code in VI and K running on OpenSUSE, which works great for writing apps on the Libra 5. Better still, if you're comfortable with the command line, you can install SSH on the Libra 5 and just develop directly on the phone. In a pinch, you can even write programs using the touch keyboard. Android has a set-in-stone way of doing things, while the Libra 5 gives you suggestions and challenges you to find a better way to implement whatever you're doing. The last thing I wanted to talk about today was the kind of developers these platforms are attracting. Android is built in a way that is boring to write code for, but any developer that can read a doc can do it. Since the user base is so big, it's profitable to pay for random developers to work on whatever app, but you end up with developers that put in the minimum amount of effort, which in turn leads to apps that look nice, but don't work quite right. The Libra 5 is still building its user base, but it's the dream device many passionate developers have been waiting for. Because of its insane flexibility and its policy to copy left, the Libra 5 attracts people who love writing code. While there is still lots left to write, I think the end result will be much better than what we see in the Play Store today. I love the idea of software written by the community, for the community, because we want to. Thanks for watching. Bye.